ABC Sports presents... College Football. Michigan comes from the far side, ready to go. Their first snap. Here he is, Demetrius Brown, the sophomore out of Miami, Florida. Sends in motion, Chris Calloway, number two. Three to nothing, Minnesota. Jamie Moore. Moore, out across the 25. Advances for seven yards to the 27-yard line. It'll bring up second down three. Football now for the Wolverines, trailing 10 to nothing. You can see how much more effective Demetrius Brown has been at home. Gets to Morris. Good cutback effort by the senior, and that should produce a first down. Brian Bonner, number 33, eventually made the stop. Let's go back to Steve. Continue in college football. We will carry on in the finest of traditions. <laughs> From the 34, that was a first down run, and here's another one. Morris slicing up the middle, first down across the 45 to the 46-yard line. He needed 118 yards today to become the all-time leading rusher at Michigan. Besting the record set by Butch Wolfolk. He's also got a chance to set the single season rushing record. That is held by Rob Lytle. One thing about this Minnesota defense, as you look at Bo Beckler, they are very young, but they're getting better. They have had some long afternoons. People like Northwestern ran all day on it. But guys like Getz, who we mentioned, Horitzik, and Leverance in that linebacking department have really made John Gutekunst's team much effective, much more effective as the year wears on. Third down now, 19 yards to go. Brown with time. He's going for all of it. McMurtry's there. He's wide open. He'll take it in. Touchdown. <laughs> 62 yards. We'll take a look at it. Number six is Demetrius Brown. He throws his pass excellent, extremely well with that left hand, the broken thumb on the left hand. Hardly a wobble in that pass, and his number one is Greg McMurtry. Takes it down the sideline. He beats Frank Jackson, number 45, easily. Siding sophomore out of Brockton, Massachusetts. Fifth touchdown catch of the year, and all of a sudden, Michigan climbs within three. Poor Second kid won't even be able to kick the ball after that. <laughs> First down down from the 39, Foggy. Throwing with a man draped on him. The catch near side. No, out of bounds. Nice attempt that time. <laughs> I don't blame you. Second down 10 now for Minnesota. Foggy on the option. He picked up ball fumbled. And fortunately, Thompson's able to retrieve it. T. That J. could Austin. have been a very, very tough play because sometimes that ball, you just can't get on it. But he did. Third and 13 for the Gophers, who lead it 10 to 7. Foggy. Fake. Setting up. He's in trouble. And he's going to be dropped. And guess who it is? Number 60, Mark Mester. Another tackle for loss. He's over there, drops him back to the 36-yard line, and Messner is almost impossible to block. He is coming on to some big figures. He could be the all-time tackle for loss leader at Michigan by the time his career is over. Well, now the line of scrimmage is the two. If you're confused, so are we. It's second down and 14. They have to go half the distance all the time. So it's second and 14, and they're backed up even deeper. Foggy, coming out, coming out of there is Thompson. He's got some running room. Look out. He could break it. He could break it. 45. He's to the 40. To the 30. 20. This will be 98 yards. Touchdown. He does. And when we say he looks like Eric Dickerson and O.J. Simpson, a combination of the two, here's why. You look at the body, he's got the strength, he's got the thighs of an Eric Dickerson. He turns upfield almost as quickly as O.J. He's got the good move, but more importantly, he's got the afterburners. He has a good lead, he makes it even better, he carries it down the sideline, and the Minnesota Gophers are doing everything they have to do to come out winners in this first half. <laughs> he's over. Callaway in motion. Demetrius Brown, he's been playing catch up all afternoon long. Callaway wide open and dropped it. Chris Callaway, the sophomore out of Mount Carmel High School in Chicago. 
Round back, his team trailing 17 to 7. 442 to go in the first half. He comes right back. And this time the catch is made by Trip Welburn, his second catch of the year. He's a true freshman out of Greensboro, North Carolina. 23-yard completion. And so again, Brown finds a way on third down. Penalty of 10 yards. First and 20. You see the time left in the first half. 17 to 7, Minnesota. Demetrius Brown, that's a quarterback draw. He's going to come out of there with it for 40. Bounces off the people, stays on his feet. He's still on his feet, and he's still going to be seven yards short of the first down. But what effort by a guy who a week ago was out with a broken thumb. 17-7, Minnesota with the lead. Big plays in this one. Look out, Brown for the backside. Gets a block to keep Bonner off of him. Callaway's there. Callaway drops it. Callaway looked like he had it for a stride at the 10, and it came loose. Doug Evans, David Williams combining back there for the Gophers. Oh, what a, what a great play this should have been. And what a great play it was for David Williams, 48, the safety, and number 41, Doug Evans. This ball extremely well thrown. That right thumb had no effect on this pass. And right here, it should have been caught. Chris Callaway right there. The ball's knocked away. Oh, boy, that, uh, that's two now for Callaway. Second down, a long six to go for the Gophers. Here's Foggy on the option. Back to Thompson. He's got a lead blocker in Evans. He's got the block, and he's very close to the first down. Boy, I'm telling you, that must be an ominous feeling to have number 39 turn up the field and come after you because he will attack you. He'll make you be punished every time you come up and make contact with him. He can, be rest, he can rest assured his receiver is making the effort downfield to make it a touchdown. You don't think our crew isn't on top of everything? They get a block 40 yards away from the point of impact. Good job. <laughs> Trying to get the first down now as Thompson was just short of it. That's Evans. And I don't know. I don't think he did. It's fourth down. They did not get the first down. It's fourth down now for Minnesota. So they got to think right now, keeping this drive going, and think of six points. Look at those bodies up at the line of scrimmage. Otto, the tight end, number 84, comes in motion. Here we go, fourth down. Pitch back to Thompson. Oh, he got it, but he paid for it. Fun around. He really jammed it in there. He took some punishment. When you're as big as he is, 6'2", 206, you deliver some of that yourself. Now, wait, they may measure. I thought he had it. <laughs> Let's see. This is a very, very big measurement. Oh, he didn't get it, did he? No. He did not get it. Well, look at Foggy. It. He's down on his knee pleading his case. They're looking at it. It's close. It's paper thin, folks. <laughs> he did not get it. Look, look at Foggy. <laughs> He's going, oh, come on. There's a piece of leather sticking out in the football. No. You see right there, tip of the football and the pole. There's just a little distance Whoa. between them. Is that a big measurement? This game has had some very interesting quirks in it. In motion comes Callaway, number two for the Wolverines. Pitch comes to Jamie Moore. Convoy ahead of him. Moore throws a block. And he pays for it as he comes out to the 29. John Leverance, who's one of the outstanding young players in America. Third down now, three yards to go. Demetrius Brown trying to change. He's in the wishbone, trying to change the play at the line of scrimmage. Option, Brown. Brown dives, and it looks like he got it. What does it mean for this team to win that little brown jug? Well, it means a whole lot. That's the, 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 the epitome of winning of the year is to win the little Brown Jug and beat Michigan. Let's, let's talk again after this play. Here's Jamie Morris, first out of there, first down to the 49. Let's go back to Steve. Thank the you. Michigan game in 1927, we had three feet of snow here before we left for Ann Arbor. <laughs> Thanks, George. George Gibson, it was very warm in the upper deck, Gary. Jamie Morris, that last run now over 100 yards for the day, 107. Brown on first down, throwing, and this time the catch is made by McMurtry. Sliding catch by Greg. And again, first again you cannot say enough about Demetrius Brown. He's throwing the ball well. That's McMurtry's stats for the day. First down now inside the 34. Hoard, the fullback. Leroy Hoard out of St. Augustine High School in New Orleans. Demetrius Brown on the pitch back to West. Wet cuts it beautifully inside the 20, 15, and drags tacklers inside the 15 to the 13. Derek Walker, the tight end, threw a big block and another first down for Michigan. Block him, take him where he wants to go, just keep taking him. First down now at the 14-yard line. Morris trying to get outside a foot race from McCree and himself. And over there is Williams, and McCree finally gets him down. 
Pick up a four to the ten. It'll be second down six. Just short of the ten yard line. Michigan trailing by ten. Trying to cut that lead. Brown keeps it. Pitches back to Morris. To the ten. Morris gobbled up at the nine. Good reaction by the Gophers. 41 Evans. 48 Williams. Third down still five. Morris now 20 carries. 111 yards. So he's seven yards away now from becoming the all-time leading rusher at Michigan. Pitch back to Jamie. To the 10. To the 5. Touchdown. And so, after that fourth and one stop, it must have inspired this Michigan offense as they take it in. A relentless drive, very well executed by Demetrius Brown, and a nine-yard touchdown run by Jamie Morris. He now has 21 carries, 120 yards, and that put him over the top. He's Michigan's all-time leading rusher. And a great run because it's for a touchdown, brings his team back into this ball game. He had a great block that time by number 46, Phil Webb. The first time he had someone leading that play once he got to the outside. But right now, the Wolverines are going for two to make sure that they can win this game by a field goal. And here they go for two from the wishbone. Demetrius Brown looking to throw in the corner. Catch made. Callaway hands. Hangs on to that one. So after dropping two earlier, he comes up with this one. That's a tremendous, tremendous route. That's not an easy route to run. We'll take another look at the touchdown run. Here's the pitch, number three coming in, Charles McCree. Catches that ball with one hand. You can't see him right now, but Bill Webb is out in front. He's throwing a tremendous block. There he goes right there. Great block, and Morris with a little extra dives in. And here's the extra point. Look at this catch by, Cal by McMurtry here on the top, uh, excuse me, by Callaway. He goes up like he's going to catch it on the inside. The last minute, he breaks away to the corner. Tough to come back that sharp and to make the catch. Excellent play. They are only down by two points. They went for it on fourth and one, did not get it. And then Michigan took six minutes, nine seconds, 12 plays covering 77 yards. Morris becomes the all-time leading rusher at Michigan, scoring on a nine-yard touchdown. And then after the touchdown, they make a coaching decision to go for two to put them within field goal range of coming out on top. Making it out is Tinglehoff. And there's a flag at the point of impact. The ball may have been loose. They're saying it's a fumble. Michigan indicating they've got it. They're unpiling at the 22. Still no decision from the officials down there. And, of course, the Gophers pointing the other way. Evidently, uh, well, one of the Michigan players coming out there with us, Rick Hassel, 25. And wait a minute, are they going to give it to Michigan? They're discussing it. We have a clip on the return here. Decline. We have white football. Michigan did recover. Well, they did that kind of subtly, didn't they? They sure did. Well, we're coming back now uh, to the action here. Leroy Ford straight ahead. First down for Michigan, and Horde hammers it down to the 10-yard line. The result in the first down, trying to stay away from the crowd noise. Trying to take the lead for the first time as Michigan. Here's Jamie Morris straightened up, and he's still not down. They get the whistle blown as he takes some punishment and tries to drag somebody down with him. <laughs> Second down now. About seven yards to go. There's a pitch back now to Webb. Webb cuts it inside, and he's down to the one. And he needed to get to the half-yard line to get a first and goal. We'll wait to see if he picked it up. On the wishbone. Straight ahead, Horde. He looks like he had it in. Second effort, he does. Touchdown. I don't think he made it initially. I don't know. We'll see it again on replay. He jumps up in the air. A collision with number 56, John Leverance. You see right here. Come right down the goal line. He goes up in the air. And the ball hadn't broken the plane. It looked close. The ball had not broken the plane without the second effort. He wouldn't have been in there. You see the officials. They did not signal, signal touchdown until he came down and then drove in from that position. There's Bo with Gary Moeller, who is the offensive coordinator for the Michigan Wolverines, as they have the lead for the first time in this game, 21-17. 
At halftime, they trailed 17-7. Hoard with his first collegiate touchdown, doing a little celebrating, and shows you some of the depth this Michigan team has. They hadn't played Hoard all year long in his entire career, and he scored the go-ahead touchdown, and they're going to go for two. 21-17, going for two. Trip Wilburn goes in motion. Brown puts that way. Over the middle. It's good for two, and that's Trip Wilburn, the freshman. So twice in a row now, they converted two-point plays. Here's Demetrius Brown, the lefty. Nice, delicate pass on the inside. Trip Wilburn. Trip, who came in this ball game, had to pull stomach muscle. Just jumps right in there and makes that key catch. 23-17, Michigan. Minnesota has it for 31 of Michigan. Three wideouts. They have autos put out to the near side. Foggy tries to give off. Close to Evans. He goes nowhere. That time, Michigan was there. 12-20 left to go. They split the backs this time of Evans and Thompson. Foggy back. Pressure coming. Throws. No one there. He had to get rid of it, and he's buried. And Messner was on top of him again. And Mark Messner is a greeting Foggy almost every snap. This will be a field goal attempt of 49 yards by Low Miller. He's one of two for the day. Remember, he beat Michigan last year with a field goal. This one on the way, and the kick is good. And so, Minnesota comes within three at the 12.06 mark. Low Miller with a 49-yard field goal. With 12.06 to go, the battle for the little brown jug is still up for grabs. So it's first and 15 now from the 25-yard line. Brown has been good on those long plays. Third and 13 one time, third and 19 another. Quarterback draw. Comes out of the pack to the 30, 35, 40. He's got the first down to the 45. What a great call that was. Everybody coming from the outside. He delayed, went up the middle, and he picked up the first down. When they come back here, he gets great blocking up front. The scheme just works. Turns around. One man almost slips on into the inside. Number 46. Doug Mueller, but he wasn't able to get there quick enough. Two wide outs to the top, one of them in motion is Wilbur. He gets to Horde, and Horde runs over people, still running over people. Another first down. That was an impressive effort. To the 38-yard line, he was pumping his knees, and bodies are strewn for about 15 yards as he went straight up the middle. Looks like your bake, your basic locomotion play. Big engine on the straight track. Anything in its way, it's just going to grind right over it. Great low-level shot. You see people hitting him. Nobody's grabbing him and wrapping him up. The strength of those legs still turning. Upper body moving forward, and there's a player down on the field. This is right on top of it. Second down, nine. Brown back, throwing deep. McMurtry's open. He can't get it. Third down, nine now. That was a near miss that time by Brown to McMurtry. Third and nine, pressure coming. Throws up the field again, and it's caught. It's caught by Callaway. Touchdown. That was Jackson, the freshman again, trying to double back. He just couldn't get there. Take a look. Look at the protection he gets. A couple of people come through, but look at the block right there. Jamie Morris, low, gets down, chops down. The man coming through, that was number 56, John Leverance. The pass is underway. Twice they go deep, and they're 50% <laughs> on this drive with the deep pass. Seven more points. Take a look at the blocking on this play for the touchdown. And this center right here is going to take this man that he's going to slide over. He's going to be picked up by Chester. Then when he comes across here, as Gary had, Morris is going to cut him here. All right? Then Demetrius Brown's going to roll out behind it all. Got plenty of time. Well, he, for instance, he, Jamie Morris cuts down number 56, Leverance. Has plenty of time to set up and see the receiver downfield and make the pass with a touchdown. The point to be made there is you will not play in the Michigan backfield if you can't block. That's correct. Absolutely. <laughs> he paid for it. At the 30-yard line now, the Gophers still very much in this one. Six and a half minutes to go. Foggy back, Mester from the backside. And the pass is caught. What a catch by Gators. Gators inside the 15-yard line. He just crushes somebody on the outside. Third down five after that. 
Augie to option the other way. Pitches to Thompson this time. Thompson's got a block. Look at him go. Five. He's got it first and goal. Ho oh ho. First and goal from the three yard line. Thompson in the backfield along with Marcus Evans. Augie on the option. He's going to keep it this time. Diving forward. Touchdown. The ball was loose, but it doesn't matter. He broke the plane of the goal. I believe. Now, wait a minute. I thought he was across the plane, and it wouldn't matter if the ball came loose. Isn't that not correct? That is correct. Now, they're indicating, Michigan's indicating a fumble. What is it? It is a fumble. I got to see this one again. We'll take another look. It doesn't matter what happens to this football if you get across the plane. He comes across. Oh, wait a minute. He didn't get across. He didn't get across. No, he, he did down. not. He did not get across. It was Doug Mallory. And what a major turnaround in this game. He did not get in. John Gulikuntz is arguing with the official, saying he broke the plane. And in this play, you'll see it. He comes across. He's got the ball tucked in. The ball sold. The ball was juggling loose. He did not have it. All the way. It was a fumble all the way. I apologize to the official. He was hit by Bishop. He was hit by Messner. The ball was juggled loose, and Bishop recovered it in the end zone. Two seconds left. Michigan's on the field. They started with a little brown jug, and they got to go back. Oh, back it up. The whole team is going over. I wonder if they know where the brown jug is. Right now, there's a man on the sideline. Steve Alvarez is standing right next to him. There's I, the picture. I know where it is. I know where it is. The gentleman from Michigan is holding it now. Is that team going to come streaking across over here to get here and grab this thing? They missed it last year, and they won it back bad. There it is. Otto with the catch. And here they come. They're on their way. I don't think they quite know where it's at just yet. Hit the guy with the ABC jacket down there, right? There's the guy around it. They'll look for you. They've got it. There is Bishop, one of the seniors, who carries one of the most cherished trophies in college football, the little brown jug. And as Bo said, I'm mad at those guys. I want to get it back. He said, I didn't think much about it until I lost it last year. And it goes back to Ann Arbor and Michigan with this victory here today, and Bo knows that he had a real battle. And it came down to that fumble in the end zone, or this would have had a much more interesting ending. And the, and the ending was as much a tactical ending in terms of that particular drive, that exchange and drive for the touchdown as anything else. The decision to go for them, fourth down not making it, then the decision to go for two points, making sure that it was at least two touchdowns or at least a touchdown field goal to tie. 